Today we're going to look at the autocomplete uh, demo, uh, which is a um, demo for and an exercise in which we will start utilizing fetch and asynchronous programming uh, to, to be able to fetch teams, in this case uh, Premier League teams, from uh, the server and present them uh, on the web page. Uh, like I have over here. So, so if uh, this is, I've, I've been used, in this case, I'm using Materialize just to get a nicer look at the application. That's not necessary, but makes it a little bit more fun. So this is actually just an input field. So if I, for instance, were to write Lee, uh, oh, it's quite small, but there is a list below that says Liverpool in this case. So if I click Liverpool, uh, a card will show up with uh, the name, uh, a nickname and a link to uh, the home page uh, in this case. Uh, and th the interesting part in this one is that you have probably seen functionality uh, just like that. Uh, so if we were to go to, uh, for instance, um, Google and if I were to write uh, client-side JavaScript, you will see this autocomplete appearing uh, in, uh, in, in Google. Uh, and of course, <laughs> those results are fetched over the network as you type. Um, and, and we could actually have a look at that if we open the network inspector. Let's change the size and look at the network. Uh, and start to to write. So if I write client, uh, it did not show up. Hmm. Clear client. For every uh, uh, key I press, uh, we open uh, and search for, get a search result back and presents that to the user. So by looking at one of those, we could probably see that uh, in the request, uh, this one, we get a search for do, 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 the Q client. So I've been searched in this one. I searched for client. Uh, it sends that, and as a <coughs> result back, we get the data for the the search. Uh, in this case, in JSON format, uh, we will do kind of the same. So uh, in uh, in this demo application. Instead of search results, we have a, a server that uh, generates Premier League teams or have all Premier League teams. As, and if I search for an M, we get all Premier League teams with an M in, uh, in their team name. Uh, if I continue uh, MA, we get Manchester City and Manchester United. Uh, if I click one of those, uh, a card appears. Uh, in this case, we will actually do this uh, in two steps. I will try to separate this um, search field uh, into a component, and then we will use that component to show, in this case, the cards. And we could use this component for other things. Uh, it's, it's just a general component for searching for Premier League teams. Um, so in this case, it's a little bit special. We need both the client and the server. Uh, so we will have a look at how that works. Uh, and we will start off by, by starting to write this uh, search field. So I will just set up my computer to, uh, uh, for this demo and we will uh, get along, uh, st uh, start right off. Uh, please grab a cup of coffee because this will be a long one. Okay, let's get started. Um, if you have a look at the files in this uh, exercise, you will find that we have a client folder and a server folder. When you do an uh, npm install, <coughs> we will also install components or modules needed for the server in this case. And you can have a look at, at the code if you like. You find it uh, in the server folder, so you can have a look at the server code. <coughs> However, this is not a course in server-side programming, so we leave that folder for now. Uh, however, to be able to contact this server, we need to start it. 
Uh, you can find how to start if you look in the package.json and in the bottom you will find a, um, a script called server. Uh, this was, will actually just run the app.js but it's neat to use that anyway. So npm run server. That will start the server uh, and the server will start listen on port 3000. Uh, when we are using Webpack in, in this config, we are using port 4000 for the client and uh, the server will have the port 3000. So we are able to, to, to run both simultaneously. Um, so this is up and running. You can have a look at the documentation for the API uh, uh, if you like. By the time of this recording, th that documentation ha haven't been written yet, but that probably when you look at this, the documentation is there. However, I know how this API works, so, so we will try that out. And a good start to try out some APIs is using Postman. Uh, and I have Postman installed and I've started it. Uh, and up here, this is a really simple API and it uses get to to, to give you the result back because you're saying, okay, I would like to get teams and you will get them back. So we can start off by doing an HTTP colon slash slash local host colon 3000 slash uh, API. This is the address provided uh, in the instructions for where this API is located. And we could run this one uh, and it could not get a response slash. Okay, I thought that was implemented, but it's not. So, okay, add teams then. It's not. What am I doing wrong? Look, it started port 3000. Uh, oh, l -l -l local host. Okay, let's try it again. Yeah, so when I did that, we got a message back. Hooray, welcome to this very simple API. This could have changed when you try this. Maybe you could get some instructions on what to do next. However, I know uh, that we have a uh, you, uh, path called Teams. So if I call Teams, in this case, you see that I get a count of 20. I will get an object with the property count that equals 20. That is how many results I got back. And Teams is a is an array of team objects. Each team object has an ID and a name in this case. So this is the actual 20 Premier League teams and we get them all. However, in this assign, uh, uh, exercise, we need to think about the possibility that we have hundreds of thousands of teams. Uh, it might not only be the Premier League teams, it might be all the football clubs in the world or something like that. And to fetch them all at once would not be recommended because it would be a large data file. So, I mean, think, think if Google were to fetch all search results possible when you write an A, that, that would, wouldn't be possible. So, so in this case, we will just have to imagine that we have more teams than uh, uh, we see here. Um, otherwise, if it was only 20 teams, we could load all the teams to the browser at startup and then we could just search in those results. However, we will do this as the user types, we will fetch the result from the server. And you can do that by adding a query to this one. I will try to make it a little bit larger so that you can see. So I'm adding a query, uh, Q, and I can add a search uh, string, in this case MA, and we send and I get a search result back, said, okay, MA, we get Manchester City and Manchester United. Uh, let's fix that so it's better, LI. Okay, that's better. Uh, so when we've done this, uh, the next step is, or I mean, this, is, this simulates that the user has written LI in an input field and we get this result back. Uh, that is more or less the thing this component is supposed to do. Uh, it will be some kind of team selector uh, element that we add to the page and this team selector element has an input field and a, uh, something called a data list to, to show uh, the result. And when the user types li, the data list will be populated with the results that we see here. There. It's always confusing where to point. 
Um, yeah, and that is pretty much it. Oh well, we have one more thing and this is for the next part actually. So in this case it only gives us the ID and the name and that is all we need to, to complete the search. Uh, however, if we want more details about the team, we could uh, just add the ID uh, on the URL in a restful way. So in this case with Liverpool, I could add 10 uh, uh, to the URL and try to get that one. And then we get a complete Teams object, including nickname, URL, and this might actually be even more properties when you try this out that we have added. Uh, 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 um, yeah, added. Okay, so but that's the next next step. So so we need to to start off by doing this query thing, and I will actually copy this URL so that we have it because we will need that URL. I've prepared some stuff uh, in the files, and we will have a look at them. Uh, as usual, I will also need to start Webpack. Uh, it's not enough that I start the, the server. Uh, I also need to start Webpack, so I will open a new terminal and do an npm start. This will start Webpack, the developer server, on port 4000, and it will build this project. And I'm visiting port 4000 in, in this browser. Um, so let's have a look. I've, I've prepared some parts, not too much, but a little. Uh, so I've added, uh, inside of the JavaScript folder, I added the uh, file team selector. So I will name my component team selector, not autocomplete, because this is quite a specific autocomplete. It's just selecting team. It could, it could be named the Premier League selector or whatever, but I, I should choose uh, team selector. Uh, in this component, I'm creating a template, uh, and this template is uh, uh, is what will be shown uh, the HTML for my component, basically. Uh, so I have a div with some CSS clauses. Just forget about those; those are for materialize. Uh, I will show that later. Uh, and I have an input field called Team Selector, uh, which has a label, we can forget about that one as well, but it has a data list. And a data list is something you can populate with options, like, op we can just write one, option, option, value equals hello, like that. And save that one. We'll show this component soon. So you add options to the data list and those will appear below the input field. So the data list is connected to the input field by the uh, attribute list on the input field. I have no CSS in this case. We will add that later. Okay, moving on to the team selector class. So I, as usual, when I create a component, I need a team selector class that extends window.html element in this case. Um, and in the constructor, I'm always calling super. You need to do that uh, in the HTML when you inherit the HTML element. I'm creating or attaching a shadow to my component and I am copying uh, or cloning the content of the template being this. I'm cloning that and appending it to, the, to my open shadow root. So I, this will basically populate my shadow DOM with uh, the HTML above. Uh, we have the static get uh, observed attributes that will uh, observe some attributes, for instance, the URL or the source of, of this uh, server is a perfect thing to have as an attribute. Uh, we have attribute changed callback. We will use this one to set up our event handlers, basically. And we need to register the custom uh, not the custom event, register the custom component uh, uh, or custom element. So we tell the browser that, hey, we have a new HTML element called team selector that will utilize this class above. So by now we should ac actually be able to, to insert an auto complete, no, not auto complete, team selector inside of our uh, uh, index.html. So 
Yeah, so you know when using uh, web components uh, or custom elements, you always need a start and an end tag. So you need to create a whole element. You can't have an empty empty element like that or like image, um, for instance. Uh, uh, web components always must consist of a start and end tag. Okay, so we're adding that one. However, this team selected.js is not connected to our application yet because in app.js it's empty. Uh, and as you know, we could use require, the node require, or we could use, if we like, uh, ES6 import uh, directive and doing it like team selector. So by doing this, as you saw, some file compiles or uh, what was interpreted, uh, in this case, the um, team selector as well. So now Webpack knows that, okay, we're using this component. The component will be registered when we call import because that is the, actually more or less the only thing we do inside of this component. Um, and by that we can use it in index.html. So yeah, looking at the page and now we have an input field like this. And we can see that there is actually a uh, small but Still, there is a data list with an option connected to this one. It's very small, though. It seems to not be working to, to just uh, zoom in uh, using data lists. Uh, hello, where is that from? Well, that was the uh, option I added up here. Uh, you could actually, if you want to make this even fancier, I think you can use label. This is a label text. Uh, so, and you will get the label text on this side. Uh, okay, but I will not do that. I will remove that one for now because when we start our team list should be empty because we haven't searched, searched anything yet. Okay, where do we start? I mean, in this case, we could start in both ends. We could start off by like having the user to write something and react to what the user is writing. Or we could just start off by, okay, whenever a component is uh, uh, connected, we just try to fetch teams and present them in the console, for instance. Uh, I think I will start off by, by uh, letting the user input some values and we can act upon those values. Uh, and in that case, uh, we need to connect some uh, events and we do that in the uh, attribute, uh, 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 in, not in the attribute changed callback, we will add the events in the connected callback. So we uh, uh, will override the connected callback function like that. Uh, and yeah, and now we need a reference to the input field. So in this case, we will probably use this input quite a lot. Uh, by that I will make a, a shorthand for that one uh, to the class, like this dot underscore input. Um, if you like, you could probably add it. Um, no, we need to add it uh, after, we ex uh, after we create the, uh, uh, attach the shadow. So in this case, I think it will be need to do something like this dump dot underscore input equals uh, this shadow root. So we will search the shadow root query selector for the input named team selector. And now we will have, oh yeah, now we will have a reference to that input. Uh, going back to connected callback. So this dot underscore input. So that is our input field and we want a connect, uh, event listener on this one. Uh, now it's up to documentation basically. So, okay, we, we want to, to, to know when the user has changed the value inside of this input. There are many ways to do that. You could like listen for keys up and keys downs or on changed attribute or there are many, many ways of, of doing that. However, one perfect way in this case is to listen for the uh, input uh, event. Um, so we will add an event, add event 
listener uh, and we will listen for input. Uh, and when the input occurs, we will just do a simple event handler. So log root like that. So I, I will just log when, when this happens. Oh, forgot the comma. Uh, like that. Okay, back. And we will open the inspector. And we will open the console as well. So we have that there. We will change the size. Okay, like that. Uh, we could actually, I think, remove this or hide it. This label for now. We'll use that later. Okay, so I have my input up here. And I'm starting writing. L, I, as, as you see, every time I change this one, the input event will occur. And this will occur even if I like copy. So say I have live, no, yeah, live.teldus.com. And I paste and it will, I hope it did at least, was four from the beginning. Let's see. Okay, 19, paste, 20. So this will like, as soon as the value of this input field change, the input uh, event will trigger. That's good. Okay, how, how, how do we get the value of this, uh, what is written? Well, we can log this dot input dot value like that. Yep. As you can see, it, for every letter I write, we get uh, this input field changed. Good, because this text string is what we need to send to the server to get the res search result back. Okay, let's do that. Uh, I could, I get a feeling that we will get quite a lot of uh, code for the search and, uh, and everything handling the search. So in this case, I will actually create a function called search or a method in this case, search. And as a uh, parameter, I will have the search string so we could we could call search with the string we want to search. So we will do that here. Uh, this dot search, in this case, we just send in the value of the input field. What did I miss? Okay, so. Uh, and now inside of search, we could, uh, could uh, do the, 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 the window or the uh, call the server. And we will do that by using uh, the fetch uh, API in the browser. Okay, how do we use the fetch API? Well, we write window.fetch and fetch will take one uh, required parameter uh, attribute and that is the, uh, the uh, server or the URL to call. Uh, I copied it, but that will not be there anymore, so I will copy it again, okay? We will fetch this one, okay? We will just try, try to fetch, like, whatever li for now and see what happens. Um, okay, uh, well, where will the result appear? Since fetch, the fetch API is a promise API, uh, fetch will return a promise. A promise about, because I mean, the fetch, this, this function will take time to, to, um, to execute. It will do a network call. It could take several seconds before we get the result back. However, in this case, we hope it's a little bit faster than that because we are doing the live search, but well, it will take time anyways. Uh, I mean, if we do something like this, let res search result search equals window.fetch. When, when this one, the fetch method, 
will return immediately. But it will not return with a search result. It will return with a promise about that the search result will appear here later on. So if we were to, to start like logging console.log the search result like that and watch uh, uh, the console and write L, you see that we get a promise with a pending status back. So, okay, we get a promise, but it hasn't been resolved yet. Uh, so we, we actually don't have a value down here. Uh, and this is where asynchronous functions com, com, uh, come into play. So we need some kind of way to wait for this fetch to finish before we continue ex executing the code in the function. However, we can't do that by like, like freezing, uh, because then we will occupy, occupy the main thread uh, in JavaScript. We need to let the thread go and return to this uh, code when the result is back, when the promise is resolved. How do we do that? Well, there are several ways of doing this. If, if we were to, to use the promise uh, functionality, we would use the then method on the fetch method. Then will be called uh, or have a callback that will be called when the promise resolves. So we will have like a result something like this and then we could copy this one and we could do a log result. Let's move that one a bit. Result save. Um, and we try it. Oh, we get a response and we get the data with, from the query and uh, we get a body that I can't see over here because we need to parse it, but we will come to that. So, so, so this will actually give us the result. You can use this uh, promise syntax if you like. However, you could also use asynchronous functions and we will do that. So instead of using this then, then uh, uh, syntax, I will remove that one and I will insert the keyword await in, in front of or before uh, uh, the fetch method. So what this says is that, okay, this is an asynchronous function that returns a promise. We will wait for that one to, to resolve. And when it resolves, the result will be stored in this variable. However, this one is read now and it says, Parsing error, the keyword await is reserved. Ooh, why is that? Well, await is only available inside of asynchronous functions. So we need to, to, to tell uh, that this function is asynchronous. And we do that by the async keyword in front of the function name in, in the class syntax like this, or if you're using the, 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 the prototype, constructor prototype uh, pattern, you could use it inside of, uh, uh, or uh, before you, you declare your, um, or when you, before function, when you declare your prototype functions. Um, okay, so if we try this one now and we do a console.log for search result, Remember, this one re uh, returned a uh, promise before, or we got a promise before, but if we do it now, instead, we get the same response as when we used then. So in this case, we could use the async to uh, tell that the search function is asynchronous. Uh, and that's actually not a problem. Uh, depends on how what we want to do with the search result. So. The search result in this case, uh, to be able to parse the body, and we know that the body is in, in, in JSON, I mean, it will look something like this, uh, and we need a JSON, and from the fetch function, the search result.json will give us that. But if we try to log that instead of the search result, save, and we run, you will see that we get again another promise that is unresolved. And this is because JSON is also a asynchronous function. Uh, because when parsing JSON, if you have a large amount of data with a complicated data structure, it could actually take a significant, significant time to, to parse the object. Um, and that's why this is 
uh, asynchronous uh, compared to the json.parse that is a synchronous function. But since we are inside of a asynchronous uh, function, we could actually use the await keyword, await, to wait for even uh, uh, the parsing to occur. And we save L, and then we get our query. Um, in this search, so this search function will take a string and it will in some way return the result of the search. Uh, in this case, we hard coded li. We need to change that to the string what is uh, offered to, to this function. Uh, I will change for template strings like that, which makes it so we could use whoa, equals. A template, in this case, we will just insert string. And that one. Okay. Hopefully, if I write M, we get a query count 7, A, and we get a result for each and every search. We almost solved the whole exercise by, by just doing this. Oh, we, well, there are some more things to do, but we are on our way yet, at least. Uh, now we could, if we like, we could result a uh, little return this result like that. However, it will warn us that in this case we are using re, uh, have a redundant use of a weight as a return value, and since this search is a uh, asynchronous function, it will return a promise. But since we are returning a promise, something that waits for a promise, we don't need the await because we could return the promise from the JSON right up instead of waiting for that one. So by doing that, save, uh, we could return from the search and then we could go up to where we called it, which is here, and then we get a result. However, as you will see, uh, teams, because this one will give us the teams. So, uh, if we do this, save and log teams. So, if what will happen? That take a moment to, to, to consider what will happen in this case. What will be logged when we do a console.log teams? Yeah, a pending promise. Why is that? Well, search is a asynchronous function. Since it's an, it is an asynchronous function, uh, it returns a promise, uh, just like fetch. So we need to wait for this one as well. Well, <laughs> parsing error is reserved. Ah, we can only use this inside of asynchronous functions. Well, turns out you could do a async before adding the event handler if we like. Save L I and we get the result all the way through. Uh, okay, so I'm actually uh, returning the search, re search result. Hmm. That wasn't what I was meant to be uh, returning from search. I were supposed to return uh, the uh, teams. Uh, and then I, this is kind of a trap. We cannot do like do dot teams, teams in this case, save, because <coughs> When we we call JSON, it's a promise, and the promise do not have a property called theme, teams. So then we need to do it like this: let teams equal search result await, uh, and then we return teams dot teams. Well. That was a little bit clunky. Let's do it like this instead. A bit more logical search result. We'll pass the search result 
and it will be search result dot teams that is returned from this function. This search, since we are returning an array of teams, however, since this is an asynchronous function behind the scenes, a promise will be returned still. But when that promise resolves, it will uh, give us the teams. Uh, going back here, L, I, and you can see that we get a uh, array of teams. Perfect. Search is actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, and we get an array of teams back. Okay. What's up next? Well, we need to like add those teams to uh, the list, to the drop-down list or to the uh, data list. Uh, I would uh, recommend having something called update rendering, uh, a function called update rendering, which, one, which we will call as soon as our data has changed and this will update the page correspond to the mod, uh, to the data that we have in in uh, in the class uh, so i create an empty mod update rendering and in this one we would just console log something well we need a way to save our teams somewhere uh, and in this case i will just create a uh, empty array this dot teams on my class like that save all the teams on my uh, 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 on my uh, element and instead of just using it inside of this one we will do a this dot teams and get a search result and instead of logging teams we will call this dot update rendering like that and in update rendering, we will log this dot teams. That, so the rendering for now is just logging the teams um, in the log. Li, and we can see that it still gives us, still give us all the teams. Okay, this is an array. We could loop the array. Uh, and I will do that by using a for let team of this dot teams. So this is a simple for off loop that will loop through all the teams and for each one it will be named the team inside of the block. You could of course use a for or a regular for loop if you like. You could use a for each iterator if, uh, function if you like. Uh, there are many ways of doing this. For, the, for now, I will use the for off. Um, and I will just log console.log. So remember, a team is, if we look in, uh, in this one, a team will be every instance of this. So if I do a MA search, <coughs> a team will be that one. And in the next iteration, it will be that one. Uh, so if we write team.name, we will get the name of the team. Team.name, save. M, A, and you see that first it logged all of those because they contained an M somewhere in the name and then Manchester United, Manchester City. If I continue, And it's, I, I spelled it wrong. Yeah, so yeah, seems, seems to be working. Uh, instead of logging this, I will create options, uh, create options elements and inserting them into our um, data, uh, data list. So this one is called Teams, the data list, and I will actually uh, make a shorthand for that one as well. Uh, Teams. This one I might not be needing anywhere else than in the render function actually, so I will move it down to the update rendering. So when it renders, I will query for the teams and I will just save a reference to that one. 
and then we will start off in the loop by creating an option. Uh, document dot create element uh, op option let option equals that one option dot add uh, asset attribute. So we need to set the value because the value is the one that will show up in the data list or in the view. Uh, so set attribute uh, value to what well team dot name. We want the name to ap appear in the option uh, like that. And then we do a teams dot append child option. So we add, we will name this data list instead. Whoa, data list and data list like that. So we will take our data list and we will add uh, append a child option. Hmm, let's try it. L and now we get a list of all uh, uh, all the teams with an L. I, like that. Hmm. Appears to be a little bit strange, right? Whoa. Yeah, and why is that? Because we never, uh, uh, we never empty it. We only add options all the time. So if we look in the, um, see if they're still there, yeah. If we look in the HTML code and we have a look at the team selector uh, and in the inside of the shadow root we find this div with the input field and the data list and if we look at the data list we've added all those options we're just adding options after option after option without ever erasing them so a good thing to do first of all in the update rendering is to 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 actually just get rid of the ones who were there in the first place and we do that simply by doing an Data list dot in our HTML. There might be a better way of doing this that is more efficient, but for now this will work just fine. So M A, and if we after writing M A have a look inside of the team selector shadow root <laughs> div uh, data list, we only have those two options now. If we back up, it will show us more options. Well, this is pretty neat. Um, okay, we're actually, actually we're getting there. Um, first of all, uh, we will fix some things that are not that beautiful. Uh, in this case, I've hard coded the URL into, uh, the URL of the API into my component and I would rather instead of doing that i would be i would like to be able to do something like source e whoa, source equals colon 3000 slash api so that i could change this url easy uh, so if i'm adding that one uh, I need to say that, okay, we, we would like to observe the attribute source. So if the source changes, uh, we will uh, have a new URL. Uh, we will save this one in a, uh, um, a semi-private member, uh, and that will be, we could actually have a default to localhost API or something like that, if we like. Uh, and when this changes, we could try if uh, name equals you source. So if it's a source, if it's the source that has changed, we will take this URL and set it to the new value, like that. Uh, okay, next up we need also to change this one to not be uh, uh, um, hard coded. So we do that like this dot 
saying that we will use URL instead. I will actually not add teams right now to the URL because that the, the, the URL of the API is this one and teams is just a view. We could have this if we if we like we could add this to another part of the code uh, and have it as the as the path but for now i think this is fine let's try it no connection refused uh, and we see that it goes to local host uh, it did not update uh, why did it not did that this underscore url well this underscore url that's the hard part with JavaScript. Yeah, still works. Good, so now we've moved uh, some dependencies away from this code. Uh, I would, I mean, if we start to write an L, A, if we were to have a lot of search results, it's quite common that you limit the number of letters that you need to write in order to do a search so that you cannot do a search for one letter. It will start off uh, with two letters, for instance. Uh, and to be able to do that, uh, we need to guard this uh, event listener function in some way that we will not do a search if the input value is length is, is too short. So if uh, this dot input dot value uh, dot length is less than two. Uh, we will just oh, return like that. Now it will start the search when I press the second uh, uh, when I, I press the second uh, key. Uh, however, this is kind of hard coded as well, and in this case, I would like to to do something similar with this one. Add a mean length uh, as an attribute to our code. We will add it as a property mean length. We will default it to two, like that. And now we're not hard coded anymore. Um, L I okay works of course if we like we could do a min length equals two no one change it to one reload L did not work uh, min length Ah, that's a string. Well, of course, this is a string. It's not a number. So uh, we cannot, uh, and I haven't added it to the <laughs> attribute change callback either. So uh, let's do that. So else if name equals mean length, that uh, this dot mean length equals parse int new value. So we parse the value uh, coming in. As you will know, I'm lacking a lot of error handling right now. Uh, that is something that we should actually add, but that would take forever for me to, to record, just adding like guards for if this is a letter and, uh, and whatever. Um, so I will not do that right now. Okay. Um, Slowly we're getting there. Now, we, I mean, this one is behaving kind of as we would expect. Um, it's searching, it's doing what it's supposed, it's searching for, for data, and when the search has updated, it will show a result. Now we want to start using this component. So, in app.js, I would like to be able to use this component in, an, in a good way. Uh, we can do that by uh, adding an ID to this uh, uh, team selector. Uh, I will call it PL teams. PL teams. 
uh, document dot query selector uh, pl teams like that let pl teams equal that one okay so now we have a reference to this this element and of course I could do something like because we have those team um, um, we have the team array on the object I could do something like we'll set timeout um, some code that it doesn't take a, just an arrow function for the code and then after three seconds I could like console.log PL teams dot uh, what's it called uh, teams like that so I wait three seconds and then I uh, log the, the teams in the, the team selector hold on yeah I know I know reload I'd write live and then we got the teams but the problem pro the problem remains how will I know that the outside of the uh, the element how will I know that the teams has updated I don't because we can't know that we need to monitor these teams in some way to be able to do that and then it comes down to to this component the team selector has the ability to create custom events telling the outside that oh something has changed that's how we do it with buttons when a button is clicked it will tell us we don't need to like watch it all the time uh, the input did it in the connected callback uh, just telling us that okay whenever something changed in this component I will tell you so we need to do the same same thing actually and since when we call this search method uh, we do that uh, and we get new teams back and as we do that we should create our own uh, event our custom event and submit it to the world outside of this component so let's do that uh, in this case oh I don't remember the exact syntax sorry um, much of code is like you, you you do something once and then you copy your solutions and then you kind of forget how to do things and in this case we need to create a new window dot uh, custom event no not element custom event we create a new custom event in this case uh, I will uh, name it uh, selected changed so this uh, no uh, in this case I will actually name it teams updated like that uh, and I will provide some details and the details will be this dot teams so I will send in the array of teams when the teams is updated or actually search updated search changed well you can name it Matt's probably have a good uh, naming convention for this but I don't so I name it search changed uh, okay now we need to dispatch this element uh, this event and we do that by telling our component in this case this is the component uh, uh, the autocomplete component why does it say autocomplete component oh the team selector component look how nice it is with documentation if you do it right so this uh, as i said is the team selector component this dot this batch event 
we will dispatch the event, we will release the event uh, or trigger the, well, not trigger, but we will, yeah, we will dispatch the event. Uh, telling the world outside that something has changed. Maybe we should do that after, I'm not sure if dispatch event is asynchronous, well, whatever doesn't really matter the order in this case. Oh, okay, dispatching the event. Now, if we go to app.js, instead of doing this ugly code, we could do a pl teams dot uh, add event listener. Change, uh, listen for search changed. Uh, collect the event. Oh, why can't I do that correctly? Ever. Log something. What will we log? Well, in the event, we will have the object details, and the details is actually the teams. Like that. PL teams is not defined. Team, teams, team. Save. Okay. Hmm. L, uncaught, in promise, type error, wind on custom event. Custom event, custom, 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 large, capitalized C, custom event. Reload. L, uncourt, failed to construct custom event. Please use the new operator. Did I not? I did not. I removed it. You saw that, I know. L, I, undefined, undefined. Uh, why is that undefined? <laughs> that is undefined. Detail. It's detail. Not details. I do that all the time. Actually, took me a, took me a while last last time. Um, but you learn. Hey. Uh, so as soon as the this component changes its search result, we can listen for that and get all the search results out of the component. And that is pretty neat, because now we can act upon this uh, if we like. Uh, however, in this case, the user haven't selected anything. Uh, we did select Crystal Palace right now, uh, and we actually got a response for that, so saying that, okay, this was, we, we got this one. However, we, we're not sure, we could just have been that we search for CR, CR, and this one and this one are the same. We don't know that the user updated this uh, or clicked some, something. We just know that the search result is one uh, team. So we need another way of, of being able to, to distinguish, distinguish between a search result that is updated and if the user has actually selected something. And this one is hard not to crack. Uh, me and Matt ha have discussed several different solutions. However, we think the best one is that whenever you have searched inside of the component, whenever you've searched uh, and you get a result back, uh, you could compare if the input that the user has done equals, uh, and if you search and get one result, uh, or well, no, it, okay. So when the user has changed the uh, uh, input field, if that change corresponds to something exactly that is in the, the list of teams, then we have selected a team. So 
if I were to have written Manchester City and Manchester City is present in the list, then I have chosen Manchester City. Or I copied and pasted Manchester City's name into the input field. However, in, in any case, we have selected one unique team because the names are unique in this case. Uh, so I think in this case that we could actually, uh, we could dispatch that, okay, the teams has changed, but we should do something more and we should have a look if, if we've actually uh, selected a team as well. Let's do that. How did I do that? What did I say? I said that we should compare, right? So if uh, this dot input dot value exactly is, is exactly equal to a object in the list, some found somewhere in the list. Uh, so I need to, to to check if we get a match uh, inside of uh, inside of this list, uh, and we will probably how did I I did that using uh, oh it's late uh, I need my papers uh, yeah I did it with a filter so. I will take the search result this dot teams and I will filter uh, fil use the filter function uh, for a team and I will only return uh, or I will return true if this team's name is the same as what the user has searched for. In this case team dot name is equal to what the user searched for or has in the input field, the value of the input field. Okay, many things happening here. Let's explain. So first of all, team is, we iterate over teams and using the filter function. And that means that we will get every team in the search result. We will loop through all the teams in the search result. If the team's name is equal to what is inputted, this will be true. And if the callback function inside of filter returns true, filter will create a new array uh, hit with all the hits where this is true. We know that this could only be true once because the names are unique, uh, but we will go through them all and this will give false for every, every, every name except the one that uh, matches. So this is equal to writing, by the way, return that. So if we better, some of you might like this syntax better because okay, so, so it returns true or false based upon this one. However, when in a arrow function, you could omit the uh, block when you want to return the result right away. Uh, this hit will be an array with, well, not an un undefined or an array with one object in it, the, the, the hit. Using a uh, shift on an array will give us uh, the first object in the array or uh, an empty array, I guess. Uh, so by doing this and logging hit, we could have a look. And if I write L, we get, un okay, we get undefined, not an empty array. We get undefined back. I, V, E, R, P, O, O, L. As soon as I wrote L, those two matches exactly, and we get a match with this object. Now we can do this. So if hit, so if this one uh, is not undefined, we do something. So if this is not undefined, what will we do? Well, we could log. 
start off by doing that. Man, just oh, arsenal is simpler. Arsenal. As soon as I write L, those matches. Okay, that's one use case. Where am I logging that? Remove it, remove it. Well, that one. So if I instead do ta and click Tottenham Hotspurs, it's the same thing. Those two match and we get a result. Even if I, I think, reload and copy and paste Tottenham, we will still trigger because there's a research, search result happens before we made uh, the comparison. Great. Now, if they match, if we get a hit, in this case, we could simplify this by doing that, removing the hit variable since we don't need it. Uh, oh, well, we do need it. Yeah, <laughs> we need it. Sorry. Uh, okay. We want to create another event. And instead of search changed, we will call this one uh, team select that. So when we selected a team, this will be uh, executed and the detail of this will actually be the hit, which is the object that was shifted out of the filter array that we get got. And if we're going to app, we could search, instead of search changed, we listen for Team selected. Team selected. Yeah. So if we get a team selected, we log the detail. Li Liverpool, and as a result, we get the Liverpool object out of the component. And this is quite important because now we don't need to do in the app.js. We just create our uh, component and we add an event listener listening for team selected. And when team selected happens, well, we could do whatever we like with the team. Okay. Uh, I will take a quick break. So we will get on to the next part because what we've done, we've actually more or less completed this team selected or this uh, input field. Uh, next step is to um, create the card below it with all the information. And I'll be back for that soon. So let's continue um, with uh, adding the card uh, or the data outside of the component. Um, when inside of this event listener, uh, if we log e dot uh, detail, uh, well come to that later. Uh, reload li and select that one. Uh, we can say that this will only give us ID of 10 and Liverpool. So it's only the selected element and this is not all the data. This is the data needed to populate this uh, drop down. However, if you look in the uh, uh, API and we add, for instance, 11 uh, to teams, we get more rich data. Uh, in this case, uh, we get uh, the name, uh, the nickname, and the URL. Uh, and this is what we need to, uh, in this case, uh, show the user, for instance. So we will actually need have, have to make an additional network call to get this data. But I will choose to do that outside of the team selector. Uh, we had a discussion. Of course, you can do this inside of the team selector and before you dispatch the event, you, you fetch that team and you add the team to uh, the hit or you, you, you return that search result uh, when dispatching the event. But we thought about it and maybe this component should only be as simple as possible and we could instead 
do this additional network fetching outside of the component and maybe create another component uh, which, uh, um, which only takes an ID, you send in the Premier League ID and that component fetches and presents a result for instance. So uh, in this case we decided to place this outside. Uh, that doesn't matter actually, it's the same code, it's only where we place it. Um, so let's do that. E.detail.id will give us the ID. And it's this ID that we need to send to the API to get the result. Okay, let's do a window.fetch. You know the drill. We need the uh, source. In this case, we could actually use PL teams dot uh, get attribute URL because that is the uh, um, the API URL uh, and we could do this inside of a template string dot at that like that. API slash teams slash what do we need to get? We need to get the e.detail.id. So that is the ID of the selected team. The fetch will do a network call. We get a result, uh, team result back. Do you know? Do you spot the error in this case? What will the million dollar question is what will be in the log when we do a log on the team result? Five, four, three, two, one, and zero. It's a promise. Because the network call will take some time. Uh, why does it say, is this another get? Did that work? plteams.getAttributeSource, right. Yeah, but still we will get a promise back. Uh, we need to await this one before we populate. Since it's an await, we need to create an async function instead. So async e and then we await and then we log the result. I should not. I will make John happy and use the Tottenham instead. We get a response back just as expected. Uh, we could let team detail equals team result dot json um, json is uh, asynchronous await that one and log the team detail totem um, woohoo we get all the information we need to be able to log something to the user. So, how will we present this to the user then? Because now it's only a matter of doom handling, more or less. Uh, uh, I, just to, to do it a little bit more fancy, I uh, uh, decided to start using Materialize to, to make the, uh, the design a little bit neater. Uh, Materialize is only a CSS framework, with some uh, helpers in JavaScript if you need. Uh, I don't think we will need them. You can click on, in this case I'm in Sweden, so it will say com, comma igong, comma igong. Uh, getting started. Um, I will copy this CDN link. So uh, you, of course you can download the CSS and include it in the project. You, you might probably want to do that. In my case I will do the simple solution and use a content delivery network instead. Um, and in this case I will have it 
outside of the component because it's not the component itself that will use the lice materialize, it's uh, the environment implementing the component that will. Uh, reload, oh, it changed a little bit because it removed all the margins. Uh, if I were to add a h2, uh, demo, like that, uh, reload, whoa, that was big because I've made it so big. So it's using robotic or Google's font in this case instead of the built-in one. Uh, okay, let's have a look at materialize because it has some some ni nice uh, nice uh, components that we could use. So we're going to compute co components and look at cards. So what I would like is this kind of card. Uh, so I would like to present uh, like the team name, some information about the team, and linked to the team using this card. Uh, and we have an example down here. What I will actually need is, well, I will take it all. So I copy that code and I will add this to a template because, yeah, I might be want to, to implement many more cards in the, in, in the future. Uh, instead of card title, well, it could say card title. Uh, I will only have one link. Uh, I will name this uh, uh, card links and I will make name this one card title. I'm not consistent with with the API but whatever. And remove that text and I tell that one to be the card content. This is just so I can easily uh, use them uh, in here. Uh, oh, I need to, to name the template as well. Uh, card template. Uh, and I will select the card template. This should be ETPC. Template, I'll create a template. I will not do anything more than that right now. I will wait until we get a result. Then I would do template dot uh, content dot all the time. Template dot content dot clone node true. I will clone everything inside of the template and where will I add it? Well, I would need some kind of where should it end up? It should end up in a div that is called uh, uh, card card container. Card container. So we add it to the card container document dot query selector dot no like that. A card container. Uh, whoa, sorry for those. No, it's getting quite late today, so I'm tired. Okay, card container dot append child. What will we append? We will append the content uh, that we cloned. So we just add the content like that. Uh, before we do, actually, we want to make some changes to this one. So let uh, card equals the cloned, and we do card uh, dot query selector. Um, do you remember what I named them? Uh, card name. Is it that simple? No, over here. Oh, card title, of course. Card title dot inner text content. Uh, text content. 
equals where is our team detail dot name so we set the name and we append the card to the page let's try Uncode cannot set property text content of null. So this one is null. It's not like that when you select an ID. Weehoo! Manchester City. This is a link. Perfect. Uh, okay, the link. We need to insert the link as well. So this should be inserted inside of the A that is inside of the uh, div that is called card links 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 a so and since we're using query selector we will get the first one we set the set attribute href to team detail dot url Could always go back here yeah url save have a look this is a link and the link goes to lester okay oh, oh, oh. Do, 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 do. What am I supposed to do? Well, 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 well. Uh, it shouldn't say this is a link. It should say team homepage. That. And as a card content, we would like to add a nick for now. Just, just to, to do something. Uh, so card content nick name. Nickname Crystal Palace Eagles team homepage, and we are more or less done with exercise. Um, well, you see that when I select, if I do Manchester United and click, it will kind of show Manchester United still. And I would like that to go away. And it goes away when we lose this focus, when we blur the component. But, so, so okay, so, so let's just try that. So when we get a hit, uh, like this, we could do a this dot uh, blur. So on, on our element, we just say, tell the element to blur. Well, what is this referring to? Well, this is referring to the team selector component. Uh, and actually what we would like to blur is the input field on the team selector component. Okay, let's try that. A, click, and we lose this focus. However, the user <laughs> clicked here and we are like taking the control from the user saying, oh, you should not be there anymore. And that's not a good thing. So in this case, we do the following. And yeah, this there might be a better way. I this was what I could come up with. Uh, so if I do a Manchester United, you see that we get blurred and we get focused right away. So we are still inside of this one. We could do uh, arrow down, select again, and everything works as as expected. No, <laughs> it actually does not. What's happening? Well, it's just adding cards. Well, that might be a feature we would like. Uh, if, if it's not, uh, we should inside when we do this, uh, when we get a new team selected, we should probably do um, uh, 
hard container. Dot inner HTML is empty. Arsenal, get rid of that one fast. Good, better, works. Uh, so I will actually stop here because we've kind of solved the whole uh, application uh, the puzzle. There are a lot of things that we probably should do. Uh, we should probably add some kind of error handling for when uh, things go south, uh, and they often do with network calls. Uh, so we should have some kind of try catch uh, when we do uh, inside of the search when we do the search query, so that we could handle uh, if the if the server will not respond if the URL is wrong or something like that. Because if we just uh, add like an S to this one and write arsenal, well, reload. We get some kind of uh, error because whatever uh, happened and it didn't work. Uh, so we need to kind of handle those. Uh, I will not show that right now. Uh, what you also could start thinking about when using components is that, okay, so we have our team selector that is a component that is well defined. But how about this card? I mean, couldn't we like have the card, the team card as a known uh, component? And the team card component uses the uh, autocomplete component for populating it. Or we populate it in app.js, so we use the team selector to populate the card uh, component. And I think that would be quite a good exercise for you to do after you completed uh, this, uh, the exercise so, uh, this far. So try to create your own component called card team, card teams or something like that. And move much of the logic from the app.js into that component. So it populates itself. Uh, and start to think about how to organize the components. Uh, maybe there should be an even one component more or for the code that you are writing in app.js in the next step. And, and, and you will soon see that creating those small components and just making them work together is quite a neat way to code uh, and structure, structure your applications. Uh, we will get into more details about this in following demos. Uh, but if you have a lot of time left, which you probably haven't, uh, you could start by start thinking in those um, terms right now and, and start thinking about how to organize a larger application, basically. So I hope you enjoyed this little demo. Uh, wasn't that short, I guess, uh, but uh, we will probably get back to uh, this or a similar application in the future. Bye.